Okay, just going to crack on in here. The first portal we go to, what sort of funding? The first portal we go to, I would suggest you look on the Wellington City Council website. There is a whole lot on there in the, in the council. Um, and just, I think it's about 16 different strands of funding or so that the council does. Now, what I say to people is, look at those strands. They go from waste management to climate change to community safety and awareness. It's amazing how many arts projects actually fit in some of these programs. And I know that because there's quite a few of our, our big arts organisations that get community awareness funding um, and that they might have a, a recycling program that they've got also within their own program. So they're able to look at how their applications, what parts they can spread out across those different um, uh, funding brackets. Don't be afraid to look at them. And that's where you ask and ring Yvonne and say, hey, look, I've got this little project and I think this part would fit nicely in the, in the safety community safety and um, you know we've got artists that are creating work about Teatl Park and about the safety of Teatl Park and so you're looking at how they can tap into the different strands of funding. Don't just think arts and culture, arts and culture. Think broader. Look at every angle of your project that you've got okay and it's about almost shopping around to see what fund yours might fit and sometimes it's about learning the language of the funder. A lot of it's about learning the language of the funder and what sort of language they speak. Okay, um, I know having been a, an arts advisor at Creative New Zealand, they've got a different language from council. Council's language is about local community projects done locally. As with CNZ, it's a different scope again. It's about art form, it's about uh, maybe a national perspective, or it's about a touring perspective. But it's, learning to speak the different language. When you start looking at places like Todd Foundation, I've had funding from them before. Todd Foundation, what are they looking at? At the time they were looking at youth development, youth at risk. And so you pitch and look at, and the way to look at some of these is to look at what their strategic values are and what their alignments are. This is the key to looking at websites. You go in into the website, you have a look what the strategic fit is, okay? Now, our strategic fit at the moment, does anyone know? It's Ahotini, okay, for council funding in, in the arts and culture round, it's Ahotini, which we'll cover on later on. But when you go inside to these websites and you're looking for different aspects of, look, I want to get some funding, sometimes you need to go down, right down to the bottom of the page, and it'll have the corporate elements in there. Tap into it and you'll be surprised what you find in there at times. You'll find the sponsorship manager. If you can't find the sponsorship manager, you'll find the marketing manager. They generally go hand in hand with each other. Mm. Okay, so understanding who's representing who. So like two degrees, okay, they've got a sponsorship page, a community one. So does Vodafone, so does E New Zealand. All these big ones that are national entities have all these sponsorship pages that you can go into when you've got community events. Okay, so just being aware of when you're looking in behind, you can look behind the corporate veil and have a look. Okay, don't be afraid to. And you think, oh, that would be interesting in mine. You'd be amazed how many are interested in the, in the community projects because it makes them look good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and sometimes you just have to point out what they're missing and it might be a certain age bracket that they're not covering. Okay, the demographics. Now, Demographics means, uh, you know, what makes up your group, what age bracket, male or female, or maybe, um, um, maybe transgender. It's having a look behind what is there, okay? Don't be afraid to. Now, with the council funding, we have arts and culture. Now, this fund supports arts and cultural projects that deliver outcomes that support the Ahutene vision and focus areas. Now, in that statement, there's a couple of key words there. Firstly, it's art and culture, of course, projects. Deliver outcomes, okay? But support Ahotene vision. That's the key word in there, is the Ahotene vision and focus areas. So understanding and learning to look at what the statements are actually saying. And that's when you're looking, when you're looking at corporate sponsors, is understanding what their vision and their mission statements are and being able to interpret it a little bit. Now within the Arts and Culture Fund, they also have, we also have an independent artist funding. Um, 
Must meet the eligibility criteria for arts and culture, which Yvonne will go over shortly. Not receive multi-year funding. Now, what I mean by multi-year funding, some of our organisations, the big ones, um, Takiro, uh, uh, Performance Arcade, they're funded on a three to, it's three years. Yeah, it's not bigger than three, is it? No, it's a three-year basis. They're given a, um, a, set, a lump sum, but they're delivered out evenly over those three years. And that helps them to forecast and, and project manage. And usually you need to have quite a significant um, track record behind that, um, of at least, I think, minimum four or five years. Yeah. And it's, it's not an easy fund to get into, but it is doable with multi-year. Um, number one, show evidence of well-established creative practice. So in other words, show them that you've been at this for how long, okay? Okay, that's what they want to know, your track record. And it might be about being able to give a list of exhibitions you've done, or a list of people that you've worked with that can vouch you for you, but show that track record, okay? Doesn't mean if you're an emerging artist, that's okay. Stay it as it is, I'm an emerging artist. And that's actually quite advantageous because there's lots of different funds just for emerging artists. Okay. And especially in Wellington, there is a Wellington Emerging Artist Trust. So remember that. So if you're just coming out fresh, there's a whole lot of other little funds that are available there. Creative Community Scheme is another one. Now then, show evidence of a partnership and collaboration with local creative communities. Sounds like French words. Just say who you're working with. Okay? And you've got a show, a theatre show, you're about to take it into BATS. <coughs> you sign a little MOU with BATS. There you go, you've got a partnership, okay? Uh, intend to sustain a creative practice in Wellington or within local mana whenua rohe. In other words, um, sustaining a creative practice in Wellington means because the fund is from the Wellington City Council, it has to be about Wellington City. Or, you know, I think local mana whenua rohe, that's quite broad because that can take a Nelson, if it's going not to or I'm not here. Okay, but it would be within the Wellington City Council, our local authorities' boundaries. Okay, however, there's room to be able to explain that this is the next, you're doing it here and then you're touring later on. Or you're bringing in some international or other artists from outside of the city and it's going to benefit Wellington. Okay? Um, number four, show evidence of an established audience for their work and of taking active steps to maintain and grow their audience. In other words, in other words, you're actually, you know, you've got a box office or you've got an audience because you've sold work or you've published poetry or published literature or you've got um, music that you've created and you've got out there happening or you're appearing in, in gigs and different things like that. That's all evidence. And it might be paper clippings, okay? It might be flyers. That's evidence, okay? It could be a portfolio of work, okay? And the proposal does not seek funding for semi-permanent, so that's what for the independent artist funding. So you can't really go to it to go and get a semi-permanent public art. There is another one. There is another fund called the Living Wage for Events. Now, it funds, like you say, non-council events organisers to enable them to deliver events that provide the living wage for their staff and contractors. Now we know that the, the, the living wage is actually higher than, than the minimum wage. So it provides support for events and wanting to provide a living wage to staff, contractors, participating artists, excuse my typo there, performers, events that contribute and celebrate the arts, Events that partner with Mana Whenua to develop, promote and deliver cultural events. Events that support communities. Events that strive to be environmentally friendly events. And events that promote inclusive, tolerant and strong communities. Now the thing with living wage, it's not saying, oh here's, you put a budget in, oh, here's my wages. We want to put in the living wage. No, we want you to show us Here's my budget for my wages. I've only got this amount of money to fund it. Can you top up the rest? Okay, so you might have a project. I've got 10,000 for wages set aside. It's really, in truth, it's gonna cost me 20,000. Can you give me the other 10,000? That's when you can apply to living wage. Aye, right, please. With the living wage, so can you only apply for funding at like the living wage amount or like if you've got no. an international artist who are obviously you get paid a lot more yeah. than you apply for funding. Absolutely, absolutely. It's what you would pay. So like when you're hiring someone, 
There's no way that a dance is going to dance for $25 an hour. No way. So look at realistic what wage for the dancer or for the performer and pay that what you should be paying. But at the same time, the fund is limited. So, you know, you wouldn't want to go, I wouldn't want to go too far over 10K or something like that. But be realistic with it. Show what you're paying in the wages and show what you would really like to be able to pay them. Okay, so it's like set events, right? Yes, so for like events. Standalone events. Oh. Oh. But I mean, I've seen events created into uh, workshops being events and things like that. So yeah, it's really initiatives designed to um, achieve at least one of the following aims of the fund, okay? So any one of those aims of the fund, events that contribute, etc. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions on living wage? Because often we get applications for living wage, but they don't show it in their budget properly. Okay, so be very clear what aspect within the um, budget. And yes, it can be for um, your, your administrator, your staff member and things like that. It can be, it's not a top up. It is a top up, but it's not. It's not there to take care of your everyday staff. It's for that event. Can I just say that when reading some of the budgets with the living wage, I mean, a lot of producers apply for that to pay their artists or who they're working with. Mm. Um, as, if you can make it as clear, so like what you're going to pay, and then in another column, what what you want to be topped up. Yeah. Because that's it's a difficult thing that if we're reading and we're reading a lot of them, if it's not clear, then we sit and you know ponder about what, what what are you actually asking. But I do know some of the applications come in and they say they will pay this, but this is the difference and there is a different column. You know, and it just makes it makes it very clear to um, well, the fund of what you what you're actually asking for. Hmm. Can can I ask what the um, when you said Nicola one off events, so that couldn't be like a three show season? If that's it it's yes. worth trying, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah we, is. we do have some that have um, so many shows, you know, within mm. the season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they'll say that each show um, they would pay this amount and then they break it down and say, well, then we need this amount. But, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of being clear. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's like giving it the season a name. It could be the silver noodles season. And so, you know, showcase yeah, kind of thing. Hey, you yeah. must have seen us. Yeah. Well, you get all that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Action. so again, the, um, the season stuff, could it be like a, a, like a program of events run over a year? Or does it need to be like, if we had six events, it would be like one every two months? You, you would probably have to break it down okay. into quarterly or something. And okay. yeah, at least every four months, I'd say, mm -hmm. break it down into sections. Okay. So that, yeah. I wouldn't do a whole annual, I wouldn't see that as an event. Mm. Any other questions on that? Okay, when you first come to log in to, to apply for funding, you get to this place called the funding portal. Who's ever logged into the funding portal before? Great, okay. Now, Yvonne's going to explain a little bit about the funding portal and what that has. Yeah, um, and actually, unfortunately, my computer has died with the internet, so I can't show you exactly what you're looking at. Um, but it's pretty clear when you actually log in, down on the left hand side, if anyone's seen it, you'll see that all applications and you, so like once you start um, drafting your application, you can just save and you can always go back to it. It doesn't, because some funders, you have to enter the whole lot all at once which we don't, we can save and close and you can go back. Um, what the nice thing about that is that once you've done the draft, some people do call us and say, can you have a look? Have we answered the questions? Um, and we'll just have a quick read and say, well, no, or you haven't added this. But then <coughs> that's the applications. And then when if you do um, get approved um, a grant, you'll see and there's another little box down there all your grants and all your payments so it's it's quite a clear um 
easy portal to navigate. The only thing, the only difficult thing is finding the little edit button, which is way on the top and out the way. But yeah, I mean, any questions um, that you have, it is, you can ring us and we can go into your application or we can go through and answer any questions. Okay, eligibility criteria. The application has to be from a legal entity for a WCC. So, you know, your form of a legal entity could be a charitable trust, incorporated society, or even a limited liability company, about a straight company. Yeah. So, yep. Okay, as long as it's a legal entity. Okay. Uh, the project's going to be Wellington based, and many benefits to the people of Wellington. Projects must demonstrate a commitment to inclusivity and diversity. Projects must at least meet at least one of the upper tenure priority areas, which we will go through. Well, so eligible to priority to get through that first step. Okay. Now, with that first step, sorry, oh, just I ask a question jumping back. Um, so, individual artists won't be eligible eventually. No, well, we'll come up to that one because individual artists can apply. But through a legal entity, there are umbrella organisations that, um, that work closely with um, Wellington City Council. You'll see on the website, there's a list of umbrella organisations that are happy to, um, to help you through on, on your application. Do they, they have a percentage that you work it out with them, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's your agreement with them. Mm. Um, I think they do take a percentage. Um, I that's think negotiable. Them, yeah, it's negotiable, and we don't really hear about it. They don't tell us what you what they've negotiated with you, and some of them do it maybe for free, but most mm -hmm. do charge something. And if you want to know more about the umbrella entities, we we can email you out the um, the guidelines and the application form, so you can work it out with your umbrella entity and what what you'll need from them and able to get through that mark. Okay. Now there's a, another couple of things um, to, to around um, uh, eligibility. For example, art and culture. When you get inside filling in your application, there's a couple of things that you need to have, not just with legal entity, but things like confirmed venues, dates. Aren't, 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 no, they're not, they're not mandatory, but they're key to your application. Um, but the big one's mandatory is having a confirmed venue, or even if you say that it's to be confirmed, it's just waiting for a confirmation from them. But things like that really do matter with funding. Okay? Now, just moving straight into the nuts and bolts of an application within arts and culture. It's, it's broken down into three sections. The code couple. What's the idea? What's your plan? What do you want to do? Fakatutuki is how viable is the application? And then number three is ahotini, strategic fit for your application. So if I looked at the code couple, the idea, is your application a solid idea? Okay, if you've got this brainwave, you go, okay, I want to do these workshops. Um, I want to work with schools. I want to be able to do uh, drama workshops uh, with mixed classes of people and um, different communities. Okay, you can break that down a bit. Now, take into consideration when you're doing that, what your artistic aims are, or what your artistic outcomes. Like, so you've clearly expressed what you want to do. Okay, this is when it's the, the real basic stuff is what what do you want to do? The idea is encouraging and it's compelling. Okay, and what I'm saying is compelling, it draws you in. Okay, you need to put on paper or in your application what it is that would make it so interesting. The artistic outcome is likely to be of a good standard. Okay, so in other words, you want you have your own pride, so you'll put that into the application. But the focus and benefits for Wellington communities and people that's a key part. Is, and I have lots of Auckland artists that come and ask, can we, can we apply for your funding? I said, yes, but you've got to make sure that you can clearly show how this will benefit Wellington. <coughs> okay? It might only particularly benefit a certain class of person within Wellington, and that's fine. Okay? But it's about being able to connect with that. Okay? Stay connected with Wellington, with Paul Nicky. 
Okay? So your co-papa, your artistic dream, that's where you get to dream it and, and put your vision down. Okay? Then we get into the real nuts and bolts. How achievable or how viable is your application? Is it well, well planned and achievable? Take into consideration, is the project achievable? Is it well planned? Timeline is achieved and realistic. Okay, timeline. You can't apply for funding before the funding round is um, decided. For example, your project has to happen the next funding round, I think, uh, decisions are made May the 24th, so that means your project has to happen after that date. You can't fund, ask, apply retrospectively, okay? And you can't apply to have your debt paid off from your last one, okay? So just being mindful of timelines. Then it's going to look at the art, the assessor is an um, art form specialist, will look at it and go, how achievable is this production? So for example, I know what it takes to put a, um, a theatre, a show together or a movie together and it's got to be like pre-production, production, post-production. Post what aspect of my project am I applying for? Okay. So, you know, I know that I'm not going to be able to get all my money from um, one city council. So I'll apply for the rehearsal stage or maybe I'll apply for the workshop stage of my script before it gets to rehearsal stage. So knowing your timeline and showing that really clearly. Okay? Bob? Yeah, just thinking on that, mm -hmm. um, what's really important to have a look at when, when you're thinking about your ideas and the Bible and how much you're going to apply for? On every fund in the um, website, we have past allocations. We have a list of who's had the funding. And so you can gauge how much, well, on each fund, um, we'll tell you how much we're going to hand out. So if you've got, if there's only 100,000 that's going to be allocated, in the arts and culture thing, there's usually about 30, 40, sometimes 60 applications, which we don't tell you. But if you're going to apply, if you need 120,000 with your idea, you're not going to get it. <laughs> because that's all got to be split. So if you go through all the past allocations, and it will show you the organisations that have been given that funding, um, and you can pitch, you say, okay, as Grace said, you know, mm. see how much you want. If we only give out 10,000 per organisation, or two or five, then that's what you've got to pitch to us. And you have to break up your op the whole operation or your... Um, you're asked that like, we can, you know, we could pay for this, but you could go to another funder for this as another aspect. Now this round is very tight, closes on March 23rd, and there's only 140,000 left in the pool, and it's always a difficult one because it's always the end of financial year. So the next round will be in July, August, and that's actually a better round to come into, to be honest, because there's more funds there left in the pool. Okay, so you know the next thing we need to make sure is our budget is realistic. I will go, I've got some budget templates that I'm happy to go through with you after this. Uh, the budget realistic, keep it real. People in the assessing this know what it costs, okay? And, and if, if it seems unreal, then grab a quote for it and throw it on, okay? You can attach all sorts to your portal, okay? The arts organisation has appropriate experience to deliver the project. Do you have it's, it's the capacity to be able to do the work? Okay, people involved. So this is all about um, track records, profiles, experience, timeline, budget, profiles. Keep it real. Okay, who, when, how, and how much. Okay, that's what that's all about. The first one was the what. What's your idea? This one now is who, when, how, and how much. So those are the questions you have to ask yourself when doing funding. What, who, when, how, how much. You know, when is people involved? Just do one one paragraph of, of, of the profile of your artist or of your crew or throw their CV in or throw their exhibition records in, whatever, we, whatever you want to do. And they might not have much, but they might have an, uh, uh, a portfolio of photographs. Add that in. Okay. See, WCC doesn't use your photographs without your permission. It comes back and will ask you to, can I use your photos? Okay. Assessors look very close. I've assessed for 10 years. I always go straight to the budget because the budget reveals everything, okay? Um, and so I think, oh, okay, yeah, no, this is realistic, let's have a look. 
So I usually go to what the idea is and then I'll look at the budget. Okay. Then I'll go to the timeline. Then I'll have a close look at the people who are involved. Okay. And sometimes it's good with the people involved to get a support letter from them or support email. And I've had artists go, oh, I've got a screenshot of my text. Can I put it into an email? Save your screenshot into an email and attach that in. Why? It's because emails are legal documents. Okay? So you can add that in. You can add everything into an email and then attach that. See, I've got the support of the artist. They're confirmed. And if your artists are confirmed, it's even better. Okay? Um, so just, and, and the, the skill level and everything like that, if it's a community person, it's a community project, have a look. There might be a co martyr there might be a minister, there might be a teacher involved with that. Hey, ask, ask, ask them to, um, sometimes I used to write the letter for them. Could, or could you sign this please? And they would sign. They'd read it and say, yep, yep, I want to support that. Cool. So it's things like that. Or there's another organisation that knows your work. Okay, or there's some other locals that know your work and want to support you. Testimonies. It all works. It all does help. Now, moving into um, aho tini. There's four strategies. Firstly, an aho is a weaving thread. The weft, I guess you would say, in weaving. Now, tini means many. So, when you, and it means an aho is when it crosses over. So, when you cross over the different threads, it strengthens things, okay? So hence when the council developed Ahutini, it was about bringing all the different strands of the community together, crossing them over and then strengthening them. Ahutangata, our people connected, engaged, inclusive, accessible communities, okay? Priorities given to projects that reflect the increasing diversity of our communities. The neurodiverse, the disabled communities, LGBTQTI um, communities are all included in the Ahutangata. Okay? And we encourage access, availability, and participation in arts and culture. Celebrating the Toi Māori and Te Reo Māori with Wellington communities. You don't have to fulfill all of these, just an aspect of these. Enhance local vibrancy for and with communities in the central city and neighbourhoods. Now, most art, art our uh, organisation or artists can do that one very strongly. Apple Tamata, it's about staying engaged and, and, and inclusive with others. Okay? So when we do the strategic fit, it's seeing where our project fits, which one does it fit under. Maybe it fits all four. Beautiful. Makes application really strong. Okay? But it, it, it all has to do is align itself with one, one of the strategies. Okay? Ahu Mahi. Pathways, successful arts, creative sector, careers in Wellington. So it's all about your mahi and your career development. It's an incredible place to create, live, learn and work. Work uh, with partners to build capacity, access, availability and grow the arts and creative sector. Support emerging and growing creative businesses, including those from underrepresented or marginalised groups, attract, develop and sustain. So, you know, it, it fits a lot of people. Make Wellington the best place in Aotearoa for young creators to live, learn and grow. So emerging artists, you come straight in under here. It's about creating your career, your pathways. Empower the capital city to be the home of Manafina and Māori Arts. Support the arts and creative sector to provide local and global leadership in arts, culture and creativity. Support contemporary art and its practice across all art. So you can see even that bottom one takes everybody in. Okay, so it makes your application, yes, I fit up with my mate. Okay, and being able to fit it and talk to it and tell how I fit this. Okay. Ahuhuna. This is a little bit different. This is about partnerships with um, Taranaki Whanui, Te Ateawa, and Ngati Tōrangatira. But it's also if, if partnerships with Tangata Whenua with Māori. Okay, um, and it's about the, the council's partnership with Tiriti and uh, mana whenua and Māori and outcomes we deliver to. So they, you know, it's about being able to, there's some beautiful murals going up around the city. One of them you can't even see because it's down the side there, but it's on the south side of St. James. And it's a beautiful one by... Hedy May Zagabelma yep. and Tina Way Plata. Here we go. And it's a beautiful story from here. A tanifa story, a, stun, a stunning story, which I won't go into. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a mana whenua story. And being able to see these different artworks coming up around the city is fantastic. 
because mana whenua are becoming more vocal and more visible with their stories and we need to know these stories. Uh, ensure that nga toi Māori and te reo Māori are highly visible and encourage respectful use of tikanga. The simple practice of being able to give your mihi to one another, your greetings to one another or being able to support each other with a cup of tea. It's manaki. Okay. So. <laughs> the other thing, looking back with that uh, ahohomona, at the moment, um, councils already has a, um, a framework working mana whenua, but we're in the process of developing one with arts and culture and design for mana whenua. So in other words, um, the iwi have already put up who, who their art people are, spokespersons, and so, for example, I've seen Aho Tinium great practice with the Wellington Sculpture Trust, and they created to, uh, a position on their governance board for one of the local iwi to be on there. Another one was the Wellington Pride Ahure that just opened on the weekend. They created two positions for two um, mana whenua to sit on their boards. And why is because they want to be able to connect with the locals. And it makes sense, ask the locals how it's done, kind of thing, so it's uh, working with them. Aho whenua, our places, spaces and venues, our city is alive. Okay, um, so we want to be, we want, and it was funny because actually the, the Mayor said this the other day at the at meeting she had that art is what keeps this place buzzing, the vibrancy of the arts, and that she wants to see it everywhere. And so thankfully they haven't cut our funding, <laughs> <laughs> they've left us alone. But um, so, and priority is given to projects that improve access to affordable access fit for purpose venues, places and spaces. And, and you can see up here, I think Noodle, Silver Noodle, you've got, you've got the hockey centre up there. Oh, yeah. yeah, fantastic. And Homegrown, you've got a venue through the council down, down Newtown there at the apartments. So if you've got an organisation needing a venue in a space, and we've got spaces or community halls, come talk with us. Come talk to us, because there's lots um, Sophie Durham at the moment is going, okay, where's, we've got this empty room, who, who wants this empty community hall? And they do great deals. Yeah, because they're no use to the council empty. So let's just put our artists in there and bring them alive. Okay? And you know, and, and, you know the rents are super cheap as best they can make it. Some of them are free because they're not worth that. But um, at the same time, it's just using up those community halls, using up those spaces. But um, building the presence of um, Māori around the Wellington, share Wellingtons and national stories across our cityscape. So you'll see like, for example, on Monday was launched um, the Embassy. The Embassy has the big billboard across the top. If you have an event coming up and you're quick enough, you can book that free of charge. All we ask you to do is the graphics part. Okay, but you've got to be really quick and you've got a message robin.boswell at WCC. But I, I, we'll give you that information or so. But she's, um, it's been put out, it was launched on Monday, that um, that billboard is, is going to be available for people to have their, their um, events, their advert up there. Okay, so it's about getting in there fast. Um, so there's different things that we're starting to think outside of that would benefit the community without all costing money but different aspects if you've got other ideas like toy porniki we need to hear them we really do because hey i i think strike while the iron's hot we've got a, a mayor and a council that's very supportive of the arts um, and they want to make sure that wellington stays vibrant or even more so okay um so that's that's basically all our ahotine strategies done. Has anyone got any questions before I before I temporarily close this? It's all this related to the um, the arts and culture funding. Mm -hmm. Sorry? It's all this related to arts yes. and culture that specific fund. Yes, that the whole thing, that's like I said, so I'll take it back quickly here. When you apply, then you go. say which strand of the whole thing? Yes, mm -hmm. so you'll, you'll have a look and you'll see in there what strand that you apply to. So those are the three aspects that you've got to cover in your, in your application. So don't get daunted by it, just remember, number one's the what, number two is the who, how, when, where, and how much, okay? And number three is how you strategically fit into, into the Akutini program. But you can see how broad Akutini is. 
Okay, I'd show me an arts project that won't fit it, and I'll, I'll, I'll go, wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> but um, it's a great fit because it weaves in. And the stronger you can make it, so I go, well, actually, I fit in under um, ahu, mahi and ahu tangata. State it, tell us, tell us how. Okay. And that Ahutini strategy is on the Wellington City Council website. So if you just Google Ahutini strategy, it'll it should come up. Aye. And, uh, so, and it goes into a lot more detail. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> if an individual or a group wanted to come, you know, they had an idea and they wanted to come and sort of get some advice and talk with you about it, that's absolutely as well? That's, that's basically what we're paid to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, seriously, just give me a call, give me a text and I can come to you and we can meet and, and you get you a coffee and, and walk you through the mahi as it comes. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, one of the best places to find templates for budgets is Creative New Zealand's website. Okay? Why, and you can, the best thing about their budgets is that you can adapt them. You can wipe it out for CNZ and I, I tell people often and um, because, and use their template. For every funder you go to, it's such a good template. What's handy about these templates is that you can add it in and the formula is already there so it'll calculate everything up for you automatically. Okay, and there's, there's um, I think Scott she said, I looked at their ones, they've got about three different templates there that are available. Just cut and paste and change the template that suits you. Um, they're very, very good templates. Now one thing I always say when doing budgets, I used to teach financial management and the interesting thing is that I always tend to add an extra column with comments and I give my financial reasoning as to why I've got that amount. And you know, you try to cram it everything in there and you say, okay, I've hired a truck for 12 days, but we've got to do this double trip to Tanaki. Just put it into financial reasoning, add another column to it, okay? And often you'll find, um, when you're doing production budgets, for example, you tend to do them excluding GST, okay? Excluding GST. And um, you'll, you'll see why, but I mean, if you're GST registered, the company that you're working for usually is GST registered. If you're GST registered, you do them excluding GST, okay? So just, just knowing these little things. But when you're doing, for example, when you come to do your expenses, break it down into nice, tidy little packages. Personnel, production material cost, administration, travel accommodation if you need to, and, and marketing, administration, marketing kind of thing. Allow yourself contingency. Contingency can vary in, in amounts. Generally it might be 5%. 5% of your whole um, expense budget. Okay? And you go, wow, that's a lot. But hey, it's the first thing that'll get shaved as soon as you realise you haven't got enough money. Realise that budgets are living, breathing documents that change with your project. You can put down your projected budget, but by the time it comes out to the actual, it's completely different. Okay? So it's a new column. Okay? Just create more columns. Create your projected budget. Cool. Then look through it and go, okay, what does this funder fund? Okay, this funder and my budget will fund the artist fees. Cool, put them there. Okay, and you're thinking, oh, I'd rather buy a data projector because I've got to travel with it. Okay, so you need to look at pub charities maybe. You can buy CapEx, you can buy capital expenditure and equipment with pub charities. Okay, I'll move that over there for the pub charity grants. Okay, so it's knowing what you can get from whom. Okay, Department of Internal Affairs, I can get I can get admin, admin staff, um, and some salaries from some um, Department of Internal Affairs budgets. So I'll park my salaries over there. So create different columns where you're different funders, okay? And just realize when it comes to show, so in the bottom when you have income, you go, I've got this application out, this application out, this application out. You put next to it, pending, 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 okay? So it means it hasn't been or oh, confirmed, great but work it out pending, okay? Other things that you want to take into consideration is in-kind support. Do everyone know what in-kind support is? Okay, really important in your budget. So, mum runs around, picks up all your flyers for you, drops off the costumes for you, and it's costing her petrol money. 
in-kind support. She's done it for the last month. So in-kind support of probably $400 worth of gas. Put it down there. Petrol donated, in-kind. It goes into your income, okay? Because it is, it is a, a core half. You got donated some wood, some timber. Um, that's a couple of thousand dollars worth, in-kind. Okay, why? It's because by the time the budget comes out, it'll show how much you've contributed. And you think, I didn't spend a cent, but yet I've got $5,000 of in-kind support. Mm -hmm. And it shows how much you've invested in there. And then you stop and you think, okay, I should have paid this person to do my marketing. They've done it for me for free. My sister's a graphic artist. She's done it for me for Put her fee in there, in-kind support. Also 15 Put it in, put it in, whatever you put in, in kind support, mm -hmm. put it in expenses mm -hmm. so that they cancel. Well, that, that's the, we'll, we'll come to that one because the in kind support needs to go in there so that when you show it later on, it, it balances itself out. But the in kind support to a funder shows how much you have put into the project. Okay? Mm -hmm. So everything costs money. It costs hours, it costs your time. Time costs money. Okay? So you need to show that. Okay, and then your expenses of like, okay, I had a photographer, cost $1,500 to do the graphic art for that. Then at the bottom, we'll show the balance. Graphic artist gave in kind, so it balances out, just like Pippa said. Okay, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you just get it given in to you, in kind support, and it wasn't an expense, it was just something that someone gave. So that can be seen almost like a donation. Okay, but it's really strong to show where your money comes from. Because often you'll have these $30,000 projects or $100,000 projects and you go, where did I get all that money from? It's all that support. Okay? But then a funder comes along and reads it and go, wow, look, they've got 60000 they've spent on this project and you'll see all that in-kind support. Okay? And it adds up and say, okay, they're, they're serious. They've taken this project as serious. Look how much time and commitment they've put into it. Okay? So just realising all of this is, is worth money. Okay, um, gosh, I'm thinking what else, but like I said, make your budget tidy, okay, keep it tidy, put it exactly however you want to categorise it, it's all fine, but you know, if your personnel are there, your, your designers are here, or your um, artist fees are here, that's fine, but just make it clear, so that when an assessor comes to look at it, it's nice and tidy and they get it, they get it straight away, okay, so what you do, I tend to do is I write up a budget and then I'll go, can you have a look at my budget? What am I looking at? Can you tell me? And it's just like, well, yeah, you've spent 3,000 on artists, you've spent 2,000 on materials, and you've spent 10,000 on marketing. Great, you understood. Perfect. Okay? So if you can talk like that, that's a good thing. Okay? And how much time it takes you to write these applications. And you'll find with umbrella organisations, a lot of them want 10% of whatever you get. So you write that into the application. Okay, that's an expense to you. Okay, um, and just being aware of um, withholding tax if you're using performers and things like that, putting that kind of stuff in your budget is, is reality. Okay, and sometimes you'll find, like for performers, they'll have a set fee for rehearsal and a different fee for performers. Okay. But just remember, it's a living document that changes all the time as your event progresses. Okay. But you know your bottom line is when you've got no, you've got nothing, but you've got to work out with that nothing, okay? But it, just be aware of, of um, keeping your document fresh. And then you'll come back and go, okay, I can take a little bit from here to make this work. Or I can drop my contingency down to 2.5%. So that gives me a bit more money up here. I think mainly for the funders, that it is a clear picture. It doesn't matter what you've got in there. Mm. It's just that it's clear. What in a, and at the bottom line, what you're asking for. So we don't mind if you put in. Some people might not. Oh, we not put that in. Yeah. It looks like I've got too much or not enough. Or but if you've got it in there, it, and it's clear to read. Mm. Then all the better. And absolutely. And yeah. the key line at the bottom is um, how much you would like to be funded. Funding request is this amount, okay? That people often forget that and you're looking for the budget and they go, nice budget, but what are they actually asking for? Okay, 
So yeah, <coughs> that's your real. But then again, the good thing with the portal, it asks that straight out, doesn't it? So that's the good thing. But for other funding brackets, I know a lot of them don't ask how much you're asking for. But add it on the bottom line of your budget. Make it really clear. And the CNZ template makes that clear too. It does, yep. Expenses mm. less income equals what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. But we can go into a whole other world if you want to know more about break-even points and things on for theatre or how much to, to work on percentages within the box office. That's my forte. Give me a call. We'll help you through working out your break-evens and all that kind of stuff. But um, for now, that's all we've got to contribute. And I hope that helped a bit. Yeah. Any questions, anyone? Clarice Mud? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, don't yeah. be shy, okay? Can don't I, be shy to ask. Can I just say, when you are, because we're going to go through initial checks, yeah. and that's sort of what we first look at, all your applications, but what a lot of people get um, caught on is bank account details. Mm -hmm. And in the olden days, we used to have deposit slips. <laughs> Quite a few young artists have no idea what a deposit slip is. In. But... <laughs> So we accept screenshots, and then when I've had some screenshots that have made it all pretty, like they've put little lines and all this, but what we need is to see the bank account, the actual bank account, or the the bank logo. Bank logo is what we yeah. need, the head. We actually need the yeah. whole lot, not, and you know, the bank logo, the bank account name, um, account number, and but and also what else catches people out? The account name has to match the applicant's um, name. So you can't have your mum's bank account on your application, um, or you can put your project name if you've got a name for the for the performance. You can put that as. And that will be one bank account. So that's where we'll pay the money. Um, but that, yeah. And financial information. So if you've got audited accounts, if you're from a large organisation, that's fine, we'll have the audited accounts. But if you're an individual and using um, Umbrella, we need to see the bank, like your bank account with a credit balance. Um, or a zero balance with this project name, only because we can't, we don't know if we're servicing debt. So we need to see, even if you're using an umbrella, we need to see that they're not going to forward you the money and pay off your car. So can I just clarify, you said that the account name need to, needs to match the application name, yeah. but your project won't be the same as the umbrella organisation, so... Um, no, as long as you've, yeah, because we, we take a note of both. If you're using an umbrella organisation, at the same time of, as apply, when you apply, you attach the umbrella agreement. So we will right. have, and there's a, there's a handful of umbrella um, organisations, and we've got their bank account details. I mean, it's like some people use bets. Um, What's this? Yes. Yeah. It's, but we would yep. know that. So we'll pick up their bank account on your application. So sorry, it's just really, really mm -hmm. deep. So if I apply for Newtown Open Studios, yep. I can't apply for Newtown. I have to put some Newtown Festival. I have to find Newtown Festival and then some time. So the application is for Newtown Festival, it's not for yep. Newtown Studios. Um, it would be Newtown Festival. Festival. Yeah. So I wouldn't say Newtown Open Studios bracket Newtown Festival. No, you'd, you'd be applying under Newtown Festival. That's, that, they've, they've actually got, um, they're registered as an organisation. Yeah. So what happens, sorry, if there's like, with funding rounds, and there's an umbrella organisation, yeah. um, that I, that I think it's my understanding, it just needs, well not just, but it, it can be another organisation than that list. Yeah that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so they wouldn't be able within that round to make an application themselves mm -hmm. to Is that, that they fund? Can. They can? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we might yeah. have five different ones for one oh, round. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. 
Yeah. Right? So, yeah. yeah, so like BATS, they may be supporting yeah, you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, but they can make an application themselves as yeah. well. It's just it's just a way of transferring money yes. um, to the individual. You're kind of talking about how to lay down. Yeah. 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 So when it gets, by the time it gets to the assessors, that's your project. Yeah. 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 Sorry, just a uh, little detail. So when you're looking at past allocations, will it show the umbrella organisation because that is the name of the applicant? Or no. will it show the project? It, yeah, it, will, it will show the applicant's name. Um, the umbrella organisation doesn't get shown in those past allocations. So let's say if, I'm trying to think, what's, what's a... Cuba Duba. Cuba yeah. Yeah. Fringe. Fringe. Yeah. 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 An artist that's performing there, that will be the name of the artist. We don't mention the umbrella. That is a background thing. But you just said that the, the application name... If, has to be yeah. Different. You have to show us your bank accounts as an applicant. Yes. So Maybe I'll talk to you later. So, I'll yeah. get a later. Yeah. yeah. So, that, so you apply this sort of extra community to be in your car. But maybe you're going through that. Mm -hmm. So just, it's just the bank ones that are. No, 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 it's not actually yeah. No, I think that yeah. the application no, had to be done. It'll be your details, basically. And that's just the bank ones. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So it's okay. We can walk you through that one. You're, yeah, sorry. You always apply as the applicant yeah the and then you will see yeah. that you use it you will see that you're using an umbrella the thing is you can use any entity you don't have to use our umbrellas that we've mm. listed up there the ones we've listed up there are the arts umbrellas but you can use anyone that you want to as an umbrella mm. Some, just checking if you're the umbrella entity yes. um i was reading are you um so you're accountable for that, so that the funds are spent accordingly and in terms of reporting. So, if the um, individual doesn't do that, the umbrella organisation is liable. Is that my understanding? Yeah. 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 And so, it's that's why we give you the application yeah. that you draw in. There's a, a, a template, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, an umbrella template that we get you to fill out. So, that's kind of an MOU between the two of you. Yeah, yeah. So, so you hand in your agreement. Yeah, 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 you, yeah you attach the yes. agreement, and when we, if you're um, successful in your grant, then we send out terms and conditions, and both parties must sign it. Yeah, yeah. Usually, an umbrella organisation would expect you to do the report. Yeah. They would, you wouldn't expect them to do the report. You would do it, and you would give it to them to. And, and speaking of reports, a good way to report is like a photographic essay. Okay, lots of photographs and things like that to show that your project is completed and done. And, and just you know, a few paragraphs underneath those photos makes a, a world of difference. Because mm -hmm. um, we want to see what your successes were, what your challenges are, is there any recommendations you want to do, and um, I think any budget variances that you may have had. But reporting back is all about being able to share with us uh, what your project was like and, and if you want to allow us to use some of your um, images if you want to. And don't skimp on what went wrong. <laughs> no. Like it's actually, it's really good to include the things that you learned. So, you know, it's, it's fine if you say <coughs> you learned, you know, that we need a much bigger lead in time. And because we didn't, you know, this happened, this fell over, or, yep. um, you know, we were impacted by COVID or whatever, it shows that you are open to learning from your mistakes and, and how did you kind of recover from, from that mistake. It's kind of, it feels like a much more authentic report than if, oh, everything, everything went really well, <laughs> we were amazing. Yeah. And if something does go wrong and you can't um, complete, <coughs> um, your event or perform, then always give us a call or, or email and say, can I have an extension? Mm. We're actually stay in touch. We're actually very nice, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And we and we we're, we're, we're always not a bunch of bureaucrats. Seriously, yeah, <laughs> we'll always ask the reason, but you know, you won't. But but it, it's nice yeah. to be um, yeah. contacted. 
Yeah, so thank you for being here with us. Sorry to wrap it up, but there's a class coming in at seven. But I just want to say uh, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. Any questions, contact us, but we'll send this all out to you. Um, Sasha's got all your contact details and things like that. But if you've got more detail that you want, uh, sharing our other applications and funders, that's what we're here for. Yep. So, to be. so just going to quickly close this with here. Uh, Nihio, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>